So this is the way I have set up the material for the ball. Okay. So material for the ball. This is the way I have set. This is having just shading model is unlit arc like this uh, plastic metal or like uh, this is lamp metal or plastic metal. Just up to you. Okay. So you can as you can see i have explained all the materials of the lab so now i can just press this control h on it all and now having just the material is not going to help us get good result okay we have to set up the light properly okay one more thing is i have given this uh, lamp material intensity to 5 instead of and the temperature i am using is 2200 and then the intensity is 5 because when we go here in the renders you can see this bulb here which is giving a clear idea that this material is a little bit translucent or transparent so this gives us a good vibe and feel of the lamp and that gradient this gradient material so if i go here and then i go here so this gradient texture this one is going to give us this effect this effect but that gradient texture alone is not going to give you that effect which i'm going to explain and show why and how we have to get this exact result okay so for that when i go here inside this okay if i close this material now having all this material and then the way the gradient texture is set it up is not going to give us the exact result we are looking for we have to set up point lights to get this or help emphasize this effect much more okay so for that what i have done is if i go to like if i press uh, so if i go ahead and switch this letter box off action frame can be on and if i go here and press g so you will see here okay, hide this hide this so you will see here one bulb like this one point light with the settings so it has a source radius of 2 then source length of 19 temperature is 2200 as i have said for the uh, emissive object bulb and then attenuation is just 75 Okay, so if you go here, if you see this attenuation, right. and I have duplicated this light like this, like this, one time, two time, three time, four time, five time, six time. Okay, so basically these are the point lights. So I have eleven lights placed here you can see here with the attenuation radius to 75 as you can see but there are 11 lights which is going to give us this result very prominent and effective result okay so if i don't add lights like the way i have added there this effect is not going to be prominent and this emissive bulb lighting is not enough to bring this effect here the gradient which is present here on this will make it a little bit more translucent but the bulb and the added bulb like this this is the key of the entire process okay you have to pay attention so the way i have been please uh, read this um, settings also source radius 2 source length 19 depending on the width of the like diameter of the lamp it, it can be increased or decreased 
this can also be increased or decreased, but you get the idea. Then we have to set the temperature, use temperature. I don't like giving color with the help of this color tool or color option. I always give the light a temp proper temperature according to my taste and like or what I want. And then this attention radius has to be 75 and the light has to be rotated like duplicated to make a circle to get this result it's important this ambience is achieved with the help of the way light has been placed here need to be very very careful about it okay so this is the light which is enhancing that gradient texture in the lamp okay and making it more better if you go here this gradient texture is being amplified and also we have to keep the opacity to 0.95 and the good part is i will share this entire unreal project and then you can all get and download it and then you can have look on it and so ever okay so now you know how to like do the lighting and now if i go here and then press just zoom in a little bit and then i press control 2 for bookmark so i have a bookmark here okay. so now we have brought the lamp inside the unreal engine we have set up the material the lamp we have set the lighting inside the lamp please remember we have given a little bit of emissive here to get in ambience of the type light itself also that is going to distribute this bulb is going to distribute light across this whole area and some part is going to be coming on this floor okay coming on the floor so we are using both lighting bulb for this ambience okay? for ambience and then this emissive inside inside bulb or like overall illumination on the lamp okay so we have reached there now what we can do we have to prepare for rendering the image as high quality as possible for that like uh, for rendering the image we are going to have path tracing enabled so if there is a chance or if your project doesn't have path tracing enabled i'm going to explain you how we can go ahead and activate path tracing you have to go to edit project settings and in project settings you have to just come down in the last in the windows you have to make sure the default rhi is 12 then inside the rendering you have to go here switch on path tracing okay so this path tracing support hardware ray tracing and then use hardware tracing when available has to be on lumen is up to you if you want to activate it or not it doesn't matter main things needs to be enabled for path tracing if this path tracing windows rhi should be 12 and then this path tracing should be active support hardware ray tracing should be active use hardware ray tracing should be active but i will suggest you should also switch on the lumen and lumen here and then your path tracing will be activated for your project to render this image as high quality as possible so now if i go here and adjust this viewport like this and then switch on the camera you see like this for this camera sequence i will go here and type pipe and then i will press home button to zoom in and zoom out and then i will press control and scroll mouse mid scroll middle mouse button then i will right click and move this and bring this up to five okay and now We'll go here and click on this render button make sure it's movie render queue and i'll click this i have this and here in still draft 
I will go ahead and keep this JPEG sequence. You can delete this and add a PNG, DMP, JPEG, or EXR. But I like JPEG the most. But yes, when I have to render cinematic images or cinematic image sequence to make a cinematic, I do render it on EXR because in editing an EXR in Premiere. Seems to be so easy and JPEG seems to be much much easy than BMP or PNG. They will give you more quality. But for some like uh, for just rendering references and all those things, just image JPEG also gives you a high quality image. But the advantage of JPEG is when you are editing the video or image sequence inside Premiere or After Effect, even if you don't have a very powerful PC, you can scroll through the videos very easily and do the editing efficiently and easily. But in PNG, it's so much choppy, laggy, no matter how fast your PC is. So you have to, like, it's up to you. Put yourself. I like rendering in jpeg so i will switch on jpeg now we have to render it through path tracing okay so for rendering path tracing we'll using path tracing we'll delete deferred rendering and then we'll go here and select path tracing so in rendering technology it's path tracing here this anti-aliasing will be deleting off and this anti-aliasing will be keeping it into 32 into 32 so 32 into 32 i'm going to explain you a little bit like from now but here are the settings which i want to explain you so this the export has to be jpeg sequence or you can use any other image path tracing has to be there at any cost anti-aliasing is 32 and 32 and override anti-aliasing should be on game override should be on so that those or use LODs and draw distance, everything is like properly set up automatically by Unreal Engine with the help of this game override. So, rendering image or video, according to me, game override is must in movie render queue. So, you should always use game override to make your image more crisp and more in terms of quality. No, by default, you like other LODs will be loaded. High resolution you have to switch keep it on if you are rendering in like 32k 16k 8k then you can you increase the tile size to maybe 8 or 16 or 4 based on the how powerful your computer is and then overlap ratio make it 0.1 okay? and just ignore this uh, error because this error is saying that you cannot use bloom and then auto explosion and this and that and that but it doesn't matter no worries we don't care about it we just have to keep it one and by default anyway everything is there you can also delete this and you don't need this high resolution necessarily but i like it having here because i can just go ahead and increase the tile count if i'm crashing if my engine is crashing while rendering 8k image on a very very high detailed project then i can just go ahead and type it four and then give an overlap ratio and it's going to render for me it will take time but it will render for sure there are also like you can give console variables on this but for rendering a just image i don't care about giving console variables if i have to render a cinematic video then yes, I will have to give console commands, which I will be letting you all in few like in other tutorials or maybe when it's needed and when we are rendering a cinematic video of any one, maybe like I'm going to make tutorial for the forest house also. So in that we have to render cinematic video. So I will be take covering that console variables. Okay. The most important part of the whole rendering thing is you have to pay attention to this aspect ratio so if this output is 1920 and 1080 then that means the aspect ratio of the camera like this 